I don't have a separate mic and camera, but I just want to get into the habit of it. Hello and welcome to Office, home of fresh Lolita content. Yes! I'm your best friend Cake, and today I'm going to participate in the 31 day Lolita wardrobe challenge that the fabled Fawn made on Instagram. When I first saw the challenge, I was like, wow, that seems like so much work. So I decided to do it in video format because that is my preferred media. I've done wardrobe videos in the past, which I will of course link in a playlist below, but this one's really cool because it's more creative. It's asking you about your opinions on pieces in your wardrobe as opposed to just asking you to show them. So I won't be hitting every single one of the 31 posts in this, just the ones that I haven't covered in videos previous. Although there will be some overlap because some of these things bear repeating. I'm also not gonna do them in order cause like, I don't wanna. Let's get started. The first thing I'd like to discuss are my under things, which I keep in a sack. When I first saw that we were going to be sharing our under things, I was like, hmm, maybe not. But I realized that if you aren't into this fashion, what happens underneath these dresses is actually a little bit fascinating. So like, yeah, I wear bloomers sometimes and I recognize that that's very different than what most people do. I don't know where other Lolitas land on these, but I really like them. They add additional volume to your petticoats, but they also are really fun. You're probably not gonna come across very many opportunities in your lifetime to feel like a pirate, and I just think you should optimize on them when they do present themselves. So yeah, I wear bloomers from time to time, especially when it's very hot out, and if I'm wearing three petticoats, it's nice to have the airiness. Also, mm, so much room for food. It's a lot of dog hair on these. This will be a trend you notice in any thing I do, ever, anywhere. Oh, petticoats, not coats, not worn on the outside. They are bundles of fabric that help give volume to dresses and skirts. Petticoats come in a variety of shapes. You have your A-line, you have your bell shape, and you have your trashy leg avenue ones that do the trick. One of the rules of Lolita is that your petticoat should match the color of your dress. But it is also a rule that your petticoat should never show. I do what I want, so take what I say with a grain of salt. I will use different petticoats or layer different petticoats depending on what I'm trying to accomplish with my clothes that day. Sometimes I want to be huge. Sometimes I want to take up more room than I should. I will wear up to three petticoats at a time. And those are usually like the best days of my life. Except for I can't breathe, which, you know, not ideal, but fashion. As you may or may not be aware, Lolita is an expensive hobby. I was tempted to do an inventory of my collection to see what it's worth would be, but then I realized I don't want to know. I've been in this for a long time, over a decade, so I have a little bit of an excuse there. Also, I wear these clothes as more than a hobby. I'm very comfortable looking weird, so they sort of are my regular wardrobe as well. One of the questions from the 31 day challenge was, what is your oldest brand piece. Generally speaking, Lolita can be classified three different ways. There is brand, which means it's a dedicated company championing Lolita fashion, making Lolita content, such as Angelic Pretty or Beavis Starshine Bright. There is indie, which means they are essentially the same thing as brand, but not as big. And then there is off brand. People give off brand a really hard time and they sort of classify it as not as real as brand. So a lot of people place a lot of significance on their first brand piece. I am what is lovingly referred to as a brand whore. That means anytime a brand does anything, I'm there to gobble it up. My first piece was a brand piece. I don't have it anymore because at that time I could only afford to have like two Lolita dresses at a time, so I was constantly trading or buying and selling to rotate my wardrobe. So this is the oldest piece that remains. This is the Milky Chan Applique Jumper Skirt by Angelic Pretty. And it remains one of my very favorite dresses. It's corduroy, it's polka dot, it has bows and pearls that are detachable. It is brown, which I never see. And here is Milky Chan, the applique. She is incredibly fluffy. She has pearl earrings and a satiny bow. Her spots are hearts. The little catch lights in her eyes are hearts. Like, 
it's just, it's, it's so good. It also has a matching head bow. The head bow has detachable ears that I do not recommend detaching because why would you? And basically this dress makes me as happy today as it did the day I got it. Um, like what's time? This dress is from 2009. So I probably got it around 2010. So that's a long time. I think I'm gonna leave these on just to make myself feel better. Another question from the challenge is, what is your oldest piece of brand by release date? And that would be Wonder Party, also by Angelic Pretty. Wonder Party is from 2008. I got mine probably around 2010 as well. The first one I got was in pink because at that time I was figuring out how I wanted to express myself in the fashion, but I am bittersweet or death, so I sold that and I went ahead and I got the one in black. I've talked about this dress before and how it's kind of the one that got me into the fashion to begin with. And I've already gone over the details on it and why I like it, but I'm gonna do it again. First and foremost, this is a bustier top, which is incredibly flattering if you have huge manly shoulders like somebody you know. The lapels are covered in different colored rhinestones. This little ribbony bowie business is detachable but it has a little spoon and a little fork at the end, so detaching it would be dangerous. It has shiny suited buttons that do nothing but bring delight, and the fabric itself has metallic suited paint. There are cascading cakes and cookies, and the motif along the bottom is a tea party, and you know how I feel about that. Like, pretty strongly. Another one of the questions is your best Lolita bargain find, which is also Wonder Party. I got this one at Closet Child in Japan and it was really cheap. I don't know why it was so cheap. I was sort of concerned about why it was so cheap. I inspected the heck out of it and it seemed like it was in fantastic condition. So I jumped on it. Wonder Party is one of a few prints that I want to own in several colorways, just because I identify with the motif so much. So yeah, really good buy for me. Oh, there are still a lot of questions on there. I can do it though. The first coffee, am I right? <laughs> um, so one of the next questions is the most popular motif across your wardrobe. There are a few constant themes you'll see across my wardrobe. The first, black, best color. The second, spooky, but like cute spooky. Third is rabbits or like Alice in Wonderland. I sort of lump these together. And fourth, the overwhelming theme winner is circus or carnival. I can't get enough. I don't know what it is. There's something about the military-esque styling that goes into a lot of them in contrast with like just the joy. The shapes and the patterns just like do something to me viscerally. This piece in particular is exceptional because it's Alice in Wonderland and Carnival. Like here is the white rabbit riding on a carousel. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's so good. I wish I could see like a brain scan whenever I see circus elements. Like I, w I wanna know what's happening in there to make me so happy. Look at this coral elephant. It has a hat and a neck ruff and a trumpet. That's so unnecessary. He's already got a trunk. I love you. That being said, another one of the questions is what piece in your wardrobe is the most neglected? And the answer is this colorway of Star Night Theater by Angelic Pretty. See, the thing is that I own it in black as well. And even though this type of blue is one of my favorite colors, black though. This is the dress that I put my friends into when I rope them into twinning with me, but I've never worn it myself. But I'm certainly not gonna let go of it because that would be weird. One of the challenges is to show your dream dress, but I don't own my dream dress. It is this color. It is by Juliet A. Justine, and it is the Robe du Brem. The musicians of Brem are an assortment of animals, and the Robe du Brem has them all 
on it, stacked delightfully. I believe it goes donkey, dog, cat, rooster? And that's it, that's the dress. The problem is that I cannot find the dang thing. I found it once on Yahoo Auctions Japan, but it was size one. And according to their size charts, I should be a size two. But since that time, I've purchased a few size two JetJ things and they are way too big for me. So every day I live with that. I'm afraid that if I die an untimely death, I will walk this plane as a ghost because I never got my dream dress. So if you wanna help me pass into the afterlife peacefully, please at me if you see it up for auction or I will haunt you. On the topic of dream dresses, one piece that I have seems to be incredibly popular, and that happens to be one of the questions on the challenge, your most popular piece of brand. Anytime somebody finds out I have cinnamon doll, they get real excited for me. What's interesting is that this is also probably the odd man out of my wardrobe, which is another question on the challenge. This is a white dress. Well, it's cream, but it's not black is what I'm saying. Also, in terms of motif, it's not exactly my steez. Like, who doesn't like a glamorous black cat, though? And like, some retro beauty accessories, some shoes. You can buy these shoes. These are real shoes. And like, pretty crystal bottles. Like, there, there's a lot to like here. The issue is these guns. I'm in a situation right now where I can either stop training so hard and fit into these, or I can just keep pushing my limits and hulk out. It kind of stinks because I, I love these pieces so much, but I also really love to lift very heavy things. I just have to figure out which one gives me more satisfaction. And I mean, there's lots of other Lily to stuff that fits me even though I am so bulky now. And if this is really popular, shouldn't it go to somebody who will wear it? I'll meditate on it. The next challenge asks us to list our most popular color piece. I took that to mean which piece do you have that's in a colorway that is most popular out of all the available colorways. And my answer was Fantastic Dolly in red. It's hard to convince people to let this one go. And like, I see why. This has the same sort of retro feel as Cinema Doll. I really love the way the black and gray pops with the red. It's not like my style, but I really like it. Know what I mean? Another dress that took me an incredibly long time to find was Melty Ribbon Chocolate in the bitter colorway. No mocha. No mocha. I hunted for this dress for an incredibly long time, and I paid a premium price for it. But it's in amazing shape, and I love it so much. Again, I've gone over the details on this before, but I am gonna do it again. It is a halter neck, but it is supported by straps. This is a rare feature and incredibly thoughtful. This way you're not always hitching up the dress. There is a cute little ribbon which can be removed. There are military-esque buttons down the front. As you can see, the fabric has some really subtle printing on it. It's a chocolate bar pattern and it's melting and it has ribbons. Melty ribbon chocolate. I love you. Next, we are asked to showcase our most extreme hair accessory and that's subjective. I am saying my tiny conductor hat is the most extreme based upon how I think others would perceive it. I think it's perfectly normal to have a tiny conductor's hat, but it is perhaps not as versatile as the rest of my head adornments. This was handmade for me by my friend Cece. Cece makes luxury lingerie now, but I'm sure she'd make you a hat if you gave her enough money. Kind of along the same vein is the favorite novelty item post. And that's gonna be the apron on my tricky nightmare factory jumper skirt. I cannot begin to express to you how much fun it is to wear an apron. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about aprons in Lolita fashion, but this is my channel, so you're gonna only hear about mine, and it is pro apron. Does it send a sort of weird message to people who don't know what you're doing? Absolutely it does. Do I care? No, behold the indifference of middle age. This makes me happy. I'm gonna do it. Here comes the egg. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, big stretch. 
Hi. I moved your food to the other room. You don't care. You won't come shed on my stuff. Yay. Okay. That being said, I do recognize that this is a lot to take in and it's not always appropriate. That is why I have this versatile shiglet piece. The most versatile piece in my wardrobe, as it were. It is a simple black and gray pinstripe OP. There is no built-in petticoat, so you can really dress it down, but it's still very aesthetic. We've got a lacy Peter Pan collar. We have ruching on the sleeves, and we've got oodles of room to stack on petticoats should we choose to. Now we find ourselves at the truly philosophical point of the challenge. The remaining questions on here really took me a while to figure out. The first one I'm gonna tackle is your favorite chord. Chord or coordination is outfit. And I don't repeat outfits. Even in my normie wardrobe, I always change something. This is something I picked up when I was playing Gaia online a lot. It was one of those forums where you could have an avatar, you could buy clothes for your avatar and dress it up. And there were sets and they were cute and they looked good together because they were built to be together. But wearing a set is so boring and nobody respects you. And I need respect, clearly. So I can't really say that I have a favorite cord because I will never wear the same cord twice. So I redefine this to be favorite set because I do wear a set, this one. I'll always change the blouse or the shoes or whatever, but I do always wear the head bow with this dress. One of the challenges also asks us what dress we could never sell. That's this one. A, I'm attached to it because I've had it for the longest. B, look at it. Nobody's gonna love you the way I do. So Hannah, is your favorite mascot Milky Chan? No, it's not. My three favorite mascots in ascending order are as follows. Ascend descending, three, two, one. My third favorite mascot is as follows. This rat. This rat is albino, this rat is exquisitely dressed, and this rat is holding a fork. I love albino animals, and I love well-dressed albino animals. And the fact that he is ready to tuck into a huge cake, like, endears him to me pretty good. My second favorite mascot also makes a cameo on the Holy Night story, this horse. This horse can be found across all kinds of angelic pretty prints. And here she is with some friends. I'm not like a horse girl, but I like her. And she shows up on a lot of my favorite prints. My number one favorite mascot can be found on Tricky Nightmare Factory. No, it is not the bloody marshmallow, but close. Here he is. This stump. Who are you and what are you doing on a Lolita print? I love and respect this stump so much. Like he's he's just hanging out by an ax. He doesn't care. His best friend's a ghost. He's filled with candy. I really wish they would produce more stump content. Next, we are asked to discuss our favorite feature on a dress. And the nominees are secret baths for outstanding wingedness, winged lapels for excellence in the field of points, and this scrolly business on my Eat Me Ink Me GSK. And the winner is this one. I've never seen anything else quite like this and every time I look at it I'm impressed. So na -na -na, winner. We now find ourselves at the most difficult part of the challenge. The part where I have to choose a favorite among my precious babies. And that's so difficult. Is my favorite the one that is the most versatile? The one I wear most often? The one with my favorite details? Is it the one I've had the longest and have the most emotional connection with? Or is it the one that epitomizes the style for me? Spoiler alert, it's that one. And that's that one. To me, this dress is everything I love about Lolita fashion. From the neckline to the military details, the fact that it's tartan, and yeah, the carnival-y circus theme. Cirque du Toile is my favorite Lolita dress, and I don't fit it anymore. My shoulders were broad to begin with, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm too swole. So as much as I love her, I think I'm gonna be selling her soon. I'm actually gonna be selling quite a few of my pieces. 
to make room for what fits me best. It's hard because I love my wardrobe, but these pieces deserve to be worn, and I just want what's best for them. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like another slice of cake, you can follow me on Instagram or on Twitter at Kate Calamity. You can also hit me up in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Or if you just want to talk fashion, throw it at me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again after not too long. Bye!